So Riga, have you had the opportunity to look at these two players' decks and figure out what the main differences are? Um, I believe one is on Crab Splash and one is on Dragon Splash, but I'm bringing that up right this second. If I can find Mizumi's list, actually. Uh, it's Jeremy. Aha, there we go. So the two lists we have for Micah, he is running your classic Dragon Splash. So three let goes, two, Mir two Mirmo's Furies. I guess the classic would be swap three Furies and two let goes, but some variation of the classic. And for Jeremy, he is running... <laughs> I almost said Unicorn, my bad. Crab. With three Pathfinder's Blade, one Reprieve, and three Hero Must Skirmishers. Um, other than that, Micah runs two Assassinations, and Jeremy runs one. And they both run a full set of Fans and Katanas. But you've got the Pathfinder's Blade and Blades and the Reprieve in for Jeremy. So very similar decks overall. Um, Micah runs seven holdings, but overall they're very they're very similar. They both run three times political rival, three times steward of law. They're both on all the bonsais, all the court games, all the for shames, all the voice of honors, and all the way the cranes. So AKA they're both playing crane decks, um, and they both run full contingents of Hotaru and Yoshi. So they are very similar. It's like. It's like the most, it's like the most uh, mirrored mirror match you could possibly have. And Onimaru says, "Crane time. This and stream is covered in perfection." Yes, all cranes. We're all we're off to the races, and we're seeing Micah getting, I think, the dream, um, and Mizumi with a reasonably good start. Uh, Brash Samurai and a three drop, or Brash Samurai and a storyteller would potentially be his start here. <clears throat> yeah, and we see uh, Only Mario is saying this is going to be a race to Guest of Honor. Really, I'd, I would wager it's going to be a race to Wave the Crane um, or any honor. So that Brash Samurai is really nice. Uh, but of course, Dojo Challenger of 3 is always, is always great. With this start, I think we do have a bit of an alternate option for Micah already showing itself in that we have three fate on the Doji Challenger and only one on the Storyteller across the field. Mm -hmm. So they could take an early board lead, especially with that way of the crane coming down, uh, and really start to push for tempo. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I probably should update my stream title as well. But I, I totally agree. You can see the Challenger come in void here. Um, and really the Challenger void, probably military, can just take Mizumi's whole board and bow it. Because presumably you'd see the Brass Armor come in and honor himself first action. Uh, and in a, in a minor miracle, we see a Crane make a first action attack, first phase attack, and it's not at Shameful Display. So very interesting. And we do indeed see Brash Timer come in and honor himself, so now voice is off for both players. The first ring is actually the water ring, which is interesting. Um, I, I think that Micah did it to force the defense of the Brash Samurai, but the Brash Samurai was going to defend anyways. So I, I think that might have been a suboptimal ring choice. But since he's able to pull both of these characters in, it may not matter. Yeah, this again is a very common line. Uh, this is maybe a situation with the challenger first turn where it does make sense, using that water ring to really just push the bad choices onto the opponent. Really just get that board locked down. Yeah, and the other thing here is, let's say that, that Mizumi does have a conflict character. That conflict character can no longer just poke military and then unbow the best other character that, that Jeremy has. Truly the most perfect game of L5R ever. We have a first attack into not shameful display, way of the crane from both players, Brash Samurai honoring itself. It's just perfection everywhere. Yeah, so much honor. They uh, they went to go fight over the manicured gardens. They had a nice little word war. And uh, it was determined that Mizumi's manicured garden was indeed up to snuff. Uh, although, did he forget to use it? 
I see in the log that the manicured garden was used. He did. He did use it. Um, Great. before the fine katana came down on Challenger. Yes. Uh, so now we do see a Hiramus skirmisher come, and she'll go ahead and skirmish the Whisperer for an unopposed attack. This will, however, um, not be used to unbow a character because the water ring has been taken. So uh, that's almost prescience by Micah taking that water ring and getting off the board. Uh, we see the fire ring come down. The, I assume that this will be used to dishonor the challenger, giving Mizumi pretty strong voice control um, for this turn, definitely. But then the brass hammer is going to go away. Uh, but it'll still be one honored to no honored. Yeah, and we have to remember that honor um, on the Brash Samurai also representing a card for the Storyteller. Although it looks like this attack isn't getting through. Yeah, we see the Steward of Law come down, which definitely telegraphs a for shame. But voice is on for Mizumi, so he could definitely have the voice. We see the for shame... And now Jeremy has to decide if he wants to bow uh, or dishonor. Or, or Sorry, he can't dishonor because Steward of Law. I play Crane too, I promise, guys. Uh, if, he, if he's going to bow or if he's going to voice. Given the long pause, I have to assume that he has voice in hand. And he's just wondering if it's worth it. He, and he says it is worth it. So he voices and then we do get the break. Um, Kaizen is discarded, which isn't the biggest loss you'll ever see, especially in the in the Crane mirror match. Um, what's really unfortunate for Micah is he played. That was a lot of resources for Micah trying to prevent that break that went through anyways. So now Micah will be. Yeah, we're we're really setting ourselves up for a turn two where. Oh, and he decided to scout the new province. This is a risky time to do it with the number of conflict characters that Crane decks like to run. Yeah. Uh, hitting Shameful Display this time, we could easily see a, um, something come down from Mizumi. So another interesting fact, uh, Nefriel pointing out in chat, I disagree with that honor. So uh, Jeremy honored the Hiramus Skirmisher instead of dishonoring the Doja Challenger, which I also disagree with. Uh, we do see the core games come down, so that puts Joji Whisper in range of Crane Box. So if Micah doesn't have a core games of his own, then this whole challenge will fizzle, uh, which will be really unfortunate for him. I guess he could have a fan, since they both run full contingents of fans. So he can have a fan or a court games, or even a way to the crane if he wants to risk his second way of the crane into voice. Uh, we see the fan come down, so that that puts the Whisperer back into breaking range and out of range of Shizuka Toshi. And we'll see if Jeremy has an answer. He's only got four cards left. And he's running Crab, so he doesn't have any Furies. Um, as far as everyone in chat talking about the honor versus dishonor, um, I mean, Jeremy's a very good player. I think... And if he... the skirmisher was a crane character and therefore representing a card through the storyteller, it would be a closer call. But with yep. that not being the case, I think the challenger dishonor is clearly better. Yep, exactly. Um, you know, he might just want to try and, and get his honor total high enough to apply pressure that way. Um, but I would tend to agree that dishonoring the challenger was better. <laughs> Nefriel in chat saying, yeah, but Storyteller doesn't care about those crab boars. Uh, perfectly spoken, just like a crane. And I would just note, we went from like 17 viewers to like 7 or 8 viewers. So it's just us cranes here with a couple friends, uh, but mainly just cranes. <laughs> I think you meant admirers and not friends, maybe? <laughs> All right, so we do see a one-to-one -one on breaks. And Mizumi gets the favor because he gets two rings to one ring, uh, which is huge actually because Shizue is going to come out now and she ain't going to die. What? It's easy to forget this about Shizue, but what the actual uh, glory count that matters for her will be the one after this upcoming turn. Yes, you're correct. And I actually just forgot that. It happens all the time. We actually have, um, have this discussion in Crane Chat too, because you can uh, 
spies at court her. Is that correct? Now, there, there's a sequence you can do because you get the favor before fate Right. Phase. If you use Yoshi on a turn and then win back the favor on that same turn, Shizue will still stick around. Yep. Exactly. And that's one that's easy to forget. And we see two Shizueis, not one, but two, uh, as well as a dupe of Narishma. Kaizen over on Jeremy's side and Savvy Politician. I suspect we'll see Savvy Politician, Shizue, Shizue dupe, and probably pass, um, especially if Jeremy has a conflict character in hand. And then on Micah's side, we see Doji Representative. I love that card. Double Narishma and Asami. I suspect we will see Narishma plus dupe, and then either Representative or Asami, and that will really tell us how Micah is playing. But knowing that Micah plays, Micah plays a Tempo Dragon, Splash, I suspect he'd go with the doji rep. So we see the dupes coming out on both sides. We see the savvy politician with none. So he might, Jeremy might go ahead and buy Kaizen plus two here and bounce that honor over to Kaizen. That is exactly what happens. And Micah passed before that so that he could gain a fate. Uh, both both cranes bidding five. This is like the most crane game you guys will ever see. All of the voice of honors bidding five. All these crane personalities. It's it's beautiful. Now that that um, now that that void ring went off, we see that voice of honor is on for Micah. So that could determine whether or not we see any honor coming out on Mizumi's side just because of of that uh, lockdown. Generally, in the crane versus crane mirror, the first player to go up on honor just prevents the other guy from ever being able to gain anything. Yep, exactly. But we do see a way of the crane coming down to honor savvy politician that does not get voiced. So the only way that this is getting voiced is... Well, now it's off. That was do or die yeah. for Micah. So I'm going to have to guess they didn't have it. Yeah, he must. Because that is a lot of stats to just let go through if you do have the voice. Yep, he must have just got variant out and just couldn't turn it off. So we see Pathfinder's Blade come down on Kaizen. So Kaizen honored, scary. Uh, so he'll get to just come in and smash whatever he wants. I suspect he would go military and then use Shizue and Politician to go in politically. So Micah used Narishma's ability to flip the Savvy Politician. Micah will gain an air because Manicured Garden's revealed. <laughs> gain an air. I can't talk. Micah will gain a fate because Manicured of Garden is revealed because he's a seeker of air. And then he'll gain another fate for Manicured Garden, so he'll be up to seven. I think there's a very interesting discussion here if you're Micah. Um, about whether you defend or not. He does defend, so I think this this shows that he also doesn't have any Furies in his hand. Uh, and I find it it's highly unlikely that he has no Fury and no Voice after seeing 10 cards. Really, he's seen up to 18 cards because of Mulligans. Uh, so now he's thinking better of it. I would I would just give this up. Even if he doesn't have the Fury, I would just trade the breaks especially since mike is we know that mike is playing a tempo deck i mean really they're both playing tempo decks but you're gonna lose the ring anyways as micah here So instead, he thinks about defending with Narishma, which I can see the justification for, but you're still down four, so you need to do something to uh, prevent the break. And in the end, he decides not to defend at all, and then he'll just let it go. I think that's a good move, because now you can attack with Narishma uh, militarily. I think it's the right choice. Uh, I think you defend with... Um, well, it's really hard to defend here. Um... You're, you've got the favor on Mizumi's side, uh, so the Miramoto's Fury is not that reliable. 
Wow. Uh, you've got two admit defeats. Micah had the voice in hand because um, we see it get discarded gosh. here. I think that's a massive Well, see, that, that would have been a lot easier to defend if uh, Kazen wasn't honored. Yeah, that's a it's a massive misplay not to voice your opponent's way of the crane. Not just because it's a crane fight and you want to slap them in the face and say, haha, you don't get to use your way of the crane. But just stats-wise, like you're saying, that's a swing of three stats. It also turns your own voice off and turns Jeremy's voice on. Like, there was literally no reason for Micah not to play that voice of honor. And I don't think there's anything particularly scary on the event side in Jeremy's deck that he would want to save it for. The only thing I can think of, I have to scroll up and see, but didn't he have a Imperial Storehouse there? No, he didn't. It was an Arishma. So never mind. I don't I don't know. It's baffling. Baffling and unfortunate. Uh, so now we see a double swing. I assume he's going to go for the same line where he goes watering. So he swings in with Challenger and Narishma, goes watering, and then forces Savvy Politician to defend. Uh, no, instead it's the Air Ring. Um, so getting that Fate off the Air Ring, he already had 7 Fate. Yeah, so we see no defense. Possibly trying to keep Jeremy out of um, political rival range. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that that's as impactful on the board as you want it to be in this situation. Yeah, I think this line is a little baffling to me. Um, so he does harpoon in Savvy Politician. But you're still just giving yourself, uh, you're still giving up a free poke to Jeremy. Um, now she's away. If she if she can't be honored, we'll just get bowed by Stronghold. So maybe that's his thoughts. But I, I don't see a reason to commit both of these characters. You could here. see the rival come down and end the debate if Mizumi attacks into Micah with political. You could. Also, the stronghold is on in the political fights. Yes, as long as as long as Jeremy doesn't have a fan to preplay or another way of the crane, then he's he's in the clear. Um, given that Kaizen will stick around for another couple turns, as long as the challenger is, um, it's really kind of an interesting game within a game now, as far as who can turn voice on. But if Jeremy has any way to pump Shizue up past Crane Box, I suspect he takes Fire Ring and then Honor Shizue, which means that voice control will basically be locked down on Jeremy's side um, for as long as he has counters. Uh, we see a first, see first shame. shame coming down to deny the break, and we see another way of the Crane. Hmm. Interesting. So even with, I, I don't agree with that way of the crane, to be honest, because even without it, you're still breaking. It's eight to three. Um, I would have saved it, maybe hoping for a savvy politician or something. So we see another voice in Micah's hand and a censure. Wow. And yet he still did not cancel that first way of the crane coming down on that savvy politician. Yeah, I think I don't. Maybe he just missed the trigger, or maybe he pressed the wrong button. Because I know Micah plays a lot like I do. If he makes a mistake, he's not going to ask to take back. He's just going to live with it and move forward. But that just that seems. Yeah, I've noticed real a bad. lot of a lot of plays tonight. People playing it very stone faced with their potential misclicks. Um, it's sort of hard to get into their head to figure out if it was just a legitimate mistake or if it was something that we are not respecting. So the interesting thing here is we see the assassination get discarded. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that either because we see the political rival in hand. There's actually two of them and a steward of law. So there's a bunch of political characters. Um, I probably would have gotten rid of the censure myself, but I, I guess I see the assassination because he wants to keep Shizue around for a while.
Uh, so we see the pass come out. We'll see if Jeremy has any of the other tricks up his sleeve to prevent the break. Uh, but as it stands now, we go two breaks to two breaks. And then Mizumi doesn't really have enough fate to buy anything substantial. He could buy a Steward of Law. Um, we'll probably see the poke with Shizue and then either the, the, the political rival come down on defense. You actually might see two political rivals. You might see a political rival on defense to prevent Mizumi from getting anything, and then a political rival on offense to go search for I think that explains the air ring then. Get going up to eight feet fate allows you to guarantee that you can play both of those rivals with one fate. Yeah, even even in that case, I would still contest the air ring, but it, it makes that play a much more valid play than when our hand when we had no information. It, it, if you get poked by Shizue, there's a 50% chance that your Fertile Fields turns the that same play on. Uh, and if you don't get that fate, you can still poke with the Steward of Law if you want to get that second character down. Yep. Exactly. Um, he has okay, we're seeing a Pathfinder's Blade on Shizue. Ornate Fan on Shizue. Yep, so he's going for it. And he's going to try and come in and, and break some stuff. Yeah. That's still not going to be enough without another buff, though, because that's 2-4. So she's at 4, and the a single political rival by itself will be at 6. So I think this telegraphs that Jeremy has something else up his sleeve. Either that, or he just really just wants to force out the political rival. I suspect that regardless of what happens here, we'll see a first action political rival with one fate. And Mizumi's kind of trying to think where he wants to go. I know Micah loves to bait players onto provinces. So Doji representative is a good enough card that people will try and go for it sometimes. It's not amazing. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't buy it and then kind of left it there as bait. Interestingly enough, both players run the full contingent of Hotaru and Yoshi, and we haven't seen either. Uh, of course, knowing Micah's luck, uh, he'll get the favor here and then he'll have Yoshi pop up. Kind of like uh, like Lions with uh, Ujiaki. <laughs> so Mizumi passes their conflict opportunity, which is interesting. Um, we know that Shizue won't go away because she has one fate, but um, why play all those cards if you know there's a political rival coming down and you're going to get coverted anyways? There's no reason to. That's just a player changing their mind and living with the consequences. I think in this case, the reason, I think there actually is a valid reason, and it's uh, because the favor will now tie because Shizue has one glory. So Micah can come in with political rival, get whatever he wants, and then the favor will tie. Oh my gosh, political rival plus three. <laughs> that guy's gonna run forever. Um, but unfortunately for Micah, there's nowhere he can go to break for three. Um, unless it's a public forum plus some a cautious scout, but we know that that's not, that's not a play here. So. There's nowhere that he can go to just break for free. We see Fertile Fields get flipped. So Mizumi will get a fate in a card. And unless Micah has a fan, this place this place isn't going to break. Although I guess he has the Steward of Law. So we could totally see the Steward of Law come down for the break. I would absolutely go for that. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know what's in uh, we don't know what's in Mizumi's hand, but it would have to be a steward of law of his own or a political rival of his own to counter. Um, but what what would be crushing is if the steward of law comes down and then the savvy politician comes down for Mizumi. Micah has passed. Uh, there's a steward of law, so this probably is a portent of for shame. If he does Stewie use box exactly, Micah needs to U-S-E-B-O-X right here. Micah uses court games. No, Micah, no. I mean, I, I understand why. That's actually a good play. Because that gets around him being insta-bowed by the steward of law. So his, his attack yeah, can does. still be on. It also gives you three turns of voice of honor. We know there's another one of those. And we uh, 
we do know this is actually I really like this challenge by Micah. I know I questioned one of the earlier ones, but he's going water because this means he can unbow challenger and then he'll win fate uh, favor, excuse me, off of glory count. Yeah, this absolutely makes sense. I have to think that he has some sort of political buff, but we actually know his whole hand and he doesn't. So the best he can hope for is to get that water ring and unbow. Uh, he can either unbow the challenger or bow Shizue. Either one will have the same effect of him getting the favor. Um, but it is unfortunate that he won't get the break here. So he just wins three versus one. There was really no reason why he wanted to use box there other than the fact that you could totally use box because lol. But he does stand up the challenger and he will he will get the water ring. He says use box did but didn't matter. Uh Micah, are you watching the stream? Are you smurfing us, dude? You can't be watching the stream while you're playing. He's not. There's no one. Any honorable crane would make that comment at that moment. <laughs> All right, so we see Shizue does lose a fate, but she still has a Pathfinder's Blade and an Ornate Fan on her. And if he can, if Jeremy can somehow get fate this turn, then uh, she won't be going away. You called it, Rega. Yoshi is a fickle man. He shows up right when you lose the favor. Oh, there he is. Boom. He says, hey, what's up? I heard there's a party here. You say, oh, you're, you're too late, Yoshi. Sorry. So we're going to see Brash Samurai, which will keep voice um, pretty solidly in, in uh, Micah's corner. It's just been crazy, the swings of voice back and forth here. Uh, I think that Micah would be in dominant control of this game if he had uh, voiced that Way of the Crane by Jeremy. But as it is, he's still doing pretty well for himself. That being said, he has voice control now, and we know there's a voice and a censure in his hand. Both are alive. Um the remaining two cards in his hand are um, it was Steward of Law and, and another political, political rival. rival. Yep. So he has lots of options. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if he passes first here. And he does. Um, unfortunately, that, that Nourishma dupe's going to go away and just die. But he wanted that fate to deny that fate, which I think is a, a valid play. And... We see them both bid five, just all five, all the day. Don't even, don't even move your dial. Just keep it at five because we're playing the crane mirror. Ignore Asami, bid five. That's what you do in the mirror, I guess. <laughs> you can see the games go different directions if you have a different set of early cards than we've seen in this one. Um, but I can't say that I would have expected anything else to happen with the sequencing we've had. Yeah. We see a reprieve come down on Shizue. Um, that seems a little bit preemptive. I guess he's trying to play around assassination, but there's only one more assassination in Micah's deck. So while well, I don't think it's a bad play, I think it's a preemptive play. And Micah says, dang it. So I assume that means he's got the assassination in hand. Uh, that was Micah saying, damn it, for flipping his Yoshi oh, face Yoshi. up after passing on seven fate. Yeah. With the favor. And it's on a broken province. So he's going to go yes. away. Yes. I was going to say, but did not say, so cannot take credit, that I don't think it's worth it to use the Nourishma with the with the face down province that he had. Yeah. Um, I, I but tend he to went agree. for it for the card, and now he's going to lose one of his Yoshis. I think... Something that I did want to say is also with both of these decks on three Hotaru and three Yoshi, I typically like to see at least one copy of Charge in that Dynasty setup. But neither of these players went that way. Well, and the interesting thing is neither of these players play Charge. There are no Charges in either of these yeah. decks. Yeah, it's uh, it's odd. And the, the the play there from Micah's side, I think we this goes back to what we were saying last game, where sometimes players will get locked into a line of play because it's brought them success in the past, because uh, it's your kind of mental memory. 
but there was no reason for him to use that enrichment action. Like, what was the upside he was looking for off of that flip? The only upside he could have had was one of his holdings, which it could have been the Imperial Palace, which, okay, cool, but you don't really want that to go away. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. That was kind of a neutral. Or an Imperial Storehouse or a Favorable Ground. So those two, you know, that could work. But you're talking about, he's already seen, oh, he hasn't seen any holdings. You're talking about seven cards out of 20, 31. Uh, the odds weren't really great either way. And if you don't flip one of those holdings, anything you flipped is just going to get discarded at the end of the turn. So we see him making a military attack with Narishma and Doji Challenger. Uh, he's attacking with strength 10 and the defense is strength 7. I think here you just say, cool, bro, and then pull Hotaru in. And that's a really crappy turn for Jeremy. We did see the defense um, come out with Kazen. If we see a Banzai in, on Kazen and no response from Micah, we could see that duel if Hotar gets pulled in to send everyone home. Yeah. Yeah, that is a very good point. We could even see the duel without that because it's, what, six to seven? Yeah. 6-7 between the, the, the Challenger and Kazen. So you could still see um, the duel go off, but that it's much lower. Probably. It would be a gutsy play, um, and he could go for it if he was desperate. So here we will see if he goes for that line. We do see him go ahead and pull in the Challenger. Excuse me, pull in Hotaru with the Challenger. Uh, and so now we'll see if you're, if you're a, a Sage and if the bonsai comes down for the duel. No, we see the policy bait debate, which is another great option from Mizumi. That's interesting. So that's what two policy debates that we've seen come out now. So there's one Yeah, and that gets there. wisely voiced. Although I would have used uh, no cent. voices with the one I would use. Yeah, I probably would use the censure, I think. Unless you're confident you can keep the the favor forever, which he probably can. Um, I think that with the honors being within one of each other, um, and with this attack going the way it's going, I would use the voice. But it's close. So we're seeing a fine katana on Kazen, which tips that balance of power a little bit. Yep, yep. We're going to see that duel come down here. Um, and I suspect we'll see max bid from both players because they really, on, on Micah's side, he really doesn't want to see everyone get sent home. And on Jeremy's side, he really does want to see everybody get sent home. Micah passes, so we will see the duel. Um, so now it comes down to the mind game of does Micah bid high and assume that Jeremy's going to bid low? Do they both bid high? Or uh, does Micah just bid low and hopefully bank fate? I mean, honor. Yep, so here comes the duel. We see it's... Oh, interesting. He picked Narishma yeah. to keep the challenger standing, which is yep. what you want to do if you're not going to play the mind games. Yep, exactly. And with that, you just say, no mind games. Everyone's going to go home. Kaizen will bow. I'll take that. Um, and, and there you have it. So now for Jeremy, what do you think that he'll want to do? Well, he's on zero fate, so we know there's a lot he's not going to be trying to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're still looking at the two provinces left for the dragon player, probably Fertile Fields and Shameful, right? And you do have that Shizue, so yeah, it looks like he's just going all in oh, for the fire for ring, which I yeah. can't say I hate. Yeah, I uh, I think this is a pretty brazen call because if it hits Shameful, then he just gets mega wrecked. Instead, he finds Art of Peace, which Micah is notorious for just letting break. 
Um, we do still have a Pathfinder's Blade. And that's what makes this play make a little more sense. Yes. Yeah, so we do see the Pathfinder's Blade. Um, interestingly... Okay, yeah, I can I can get behind this play. So challenges are to use your harpoon action. You can come in, you can defend with strength. What is that? Six, 11, 12 plus favor. Um, so that makes sense. Especially since that Pathfinder's Blade is around. And if you can just win this conflict, then you can uh, maybe deny favor. What ring is it? It's fire ring. I think there's a pretty strong argument for just not committing challenger though, because you can guarantee that you get the favor. Um, yeah, if uh, if Micah had just st stood the challenger and the brash samurai, he could have guaranteed that he'd get favor here, which he really wants to keep. We see for shame come out to dishonor the Doji challenger. So now it's down to ten to ten. And see here, you see, uh, oh, and we see court games honoring the Doji Challenger. So is that the third court games? Um, no, he's a lot of way of the cranes, right? So he's used two way of the crane, two court games. So one more of each. Yep. So we see Ornate Fan going to Hotaru. So it's back to 12 12. Uh, and this was the risk of defending in my mind. Um, but we do see a Fury Bausch as well. And you can see with the Crane versus Crane mirror how quickly those honor totals can bounce around, or sorry, those personal honor tokens can bounce around. That's why I support the idea of using the Voice of Honor before when you could use it. Yeah, it's a uh, good... If this ring goes off, he's again going to lose Voice of Honor for an indeterminate amount of time. Yeah, that's true. And Onimaru points that out in chat as well. Uh, a few minutes ago, he said, Crane versus Crane, no telling how long you can stay dominant on honor. Use voice while you can. Uh, so I can I can get behind that. We do see Micah win, so his gambit does pay off. Um, I think he may have unnecessarily put himself at risk there, but it pays off because he, he wins. Um, and then he attacks with Brash Samurai. Uh, I don't think... I can't support this. I think you play your other political rival. Yeah. I think you want that glory for favor. Exactly. Just in case. Yep. That's that's what I was just gonna say. Uh, I was gonna say I don't really I can't really get behind this. I know he wants to use the Breast Armai's ability so he can honor himself, but he's still gonna be around next turn. Just play your other um just play your other dude, political rival, and then make the attack because you have the favor. And so then you just win. You you covert the steward of law. He's got no one that can come in. And then you just take fertile fields, you keep the breast samurai standing, and you guarantee yourself the favor. Do you think there's a game plan for this defense with the boxes online? Um, do you think this attack makes even less sense? I wonder if either player will remember to use their box. Wow. Okay, the um, box is used by Micah. <laughs> Honor goes off for. Micah as well. Yeah. So I, I guess this attack is going to work out. I don't agree with that line by Jeremy at all. Um, I guess he was overly afraid of Brash Samurai honoring himself, but instead he paid three to do nothing, and he knows that he knows that Micah had that center. So it's like just use box there. Yeah, Mizumi. I can't believe I missed this. Is political. He probably just assumed it was military because uh, that's how you usually see samurai. And so now we go back again, talking to pre-planned lines. Usually you see Brash Samurai in military. And so Jeremy probably just assumed, oh, this is military. But it was actually political. And so really the first action should have just been use box. Samurai gets bowed, and then nothing bad happens. But now because of uh, missing that and the assassination getting canceled, Fertile Fields will break here. And this, my friends, is why use box is a meme. Because even the best play crane players forget to use box sometimes. Because our box is just Yeah, that it awesome. is important. We have been fairly critical of a lot of these lines, but we've been wrong a few times, and both of these cup players are very good. So yes. we can see that it's just uh, not as simple. 
yeah i think you know it, it's it's very easy in games like i won't say very easy but easier in games like magic to say he's taking the wrong line or he's making a mistake period uh in l5r everything is a lot more nuanced you saw like with the air ring where i still don't agree with that air ring to get the fate last turn but it allowed micah to play two political rivals if he needed to so there was reasoning behind it um i think that was the only true like outright mistake that we saw and and we saw um jeremy call that out in chat i can't believe i missed that was political and then micah says don't be so busy trying to murder me next time um i think that's the only actual mistake was if you just use box there then this whole conflict is basically done <laughs> oni maru <laughs> saying i never forget to use the box but i walk into it all the time yeah i uh i have done that before i don't do it very often as crane but like when I'm playing Lion or Dragon, which are like my my secret love clans in the background that I that I cheat on Crane with, um, I do it all the time. I'll be like, I'm gonna poke you with a normal LPB, and then uh, I get bowed. I'm like, dang it. So we see Mizumi come in for the poke on Shameful Display. He could have a Bonsai, so he could get his third break. Uh, no defense comes out. I believe that Micah still has a steward, right, Luke? He should. Um, should still have one, but that won't do it on its own. Oh, and I totally glossed this over. So Mizumi loses admit defeat at random, which is unfortunate. But the real dagger here is Micah uses let go on the reprieve for Shizue. So that ornate fan and Pathfinder's Blade are going to do basically nothing. And now we see Steward of Law come down to uh, to defend. We do see, whoa, what is going on here? Okay, so Bonsai comes out, gets counter Bonsai. Mm -hmm. So it's five to five. And we see Shameful Use, so it's five to six. Micah will win the ring because Mizumi just passes. Oh no, <laughs> Steward of Law has no glory. Yeah, so it's five to five, and Mizumi wins the water ring. So he'll bow, he'll unbow Hotaru and get the favor. And this is why I agree with that line that you were pointing out, Luke, of keeping the brass samurai standing, because then it would have been, I guess, it would have been five to four there. But I uh, would have been defending with the brass samurai, which could be honored, and go up to eight. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So he would he would defense. not have lost. That right. was Nefriel saying that was super bad. <laughs> Nefriel, explain explain uh, more into chat why that was super bad. But uh, yeah, losing the uh, losing the bonsai to not break felt feels kind of bad though. Man, so much honor. Now that let go was a waste too. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, so so here we see the guest of honor make its first showing after the crane players have gassed themselves with hand yep. sizes of one and three respectively. So it's still a good card, but not as good as it would have been earlier in the game when they were still sitting on eight to ten cards. Uh, and I think what Micah can do here is he can just buy both of those challengers, um, maybe even slam his bid down to one to really put the honor pressure on Jeremy. And then he can just go... Oh, he's not going first player, mercifully. Mercifully for Jeremy, he's not first. Um, if he wants to bid one, he should probably try to figure out a way to trigger that Asami. Yeah, you're right. He can go challenger, challenger, Asami. Just give the fate to Jeremy. Pass. And then he can, totally, he can guarantee it, actually. If he's willing to give up his third break, he can guarantee that he can use Asami because he can just uh, make a triple harpoon attack with all those challengers and pull in any political defender. Yeah, so Nefriel saying that let go is a waste as well. Uh, Micah's, Micah's fate lead is so big though. Um, I tend to agree, although that reprieve would have stuck around. So it's not completely useless. It's just a delayed effect of letting go of the reprieve. It may become so delayed that it doesn't matter. But uh, we will see. So the interesting thing here is Micah can go to box now. And Micah knows that box is likely um, rally to the cause. 
So if it boxes either for value of the cause or fertile fields. So either way, it's a four strength province and it doesn't have any, any super nasty effects. So he could just ram all three of those challengers into a conflict and bow out Jeremy's board, especially if Jeremy makes an attack uh, and then send the rest of his characters in at the stronghold and probably get the win. And Remember, the... he has another covert effect through the political rival in hand, so an all-out swing at Vox could be pretty devastating. Yep. Uh, Micah is second player here, so I suspect that you'll see a Doji Challenger do something. Um, Jeremy's Do Doji Challenger, that is. Probably pull in the honored Do other Doji Challenger with the fine katana. Luckily, Mike has favorable ground. Yeah, that's true. And hopefully, Jeremy doesn't forget it because it's so easy to forget favorable ground. Um, I was saying like two streams ago when someone forgot a favorable ground that turned out to be a huge play. Um, you know, I've had it, I've seen it happen both ways, and I've had it happen for me where my opponent forgets that I have favorable ground, and then you just went off of that because you're like, oh yeah, I'll just move my guy back in this conflict, thanks. So again, we see Micah use Narishma to flip Yoshi face up. I really disagree with the way that Micah uses Narishma. Um, I don't think there's a lot of value in it unless you get the home run and you hit a and you hit a holding. But even here, it was a one in twenty-five chance. Well, a seven, excuse me, a seven in twenty-five chance of hitting a holding. Uh, I guess six because this is favorable ground. Yeah, so chat talking about uh, Nefriel saying Micah's fate lead is so big. Onimaru saying he sells another political rival, so he can pretty much guarantee an undefeated box political attack. Uh, Nefriel saying, yeah, I think he probably wins here still. Uh, I tend to agree with that. I think the only hope that Jeremy has is not this line. Um... So we see a water military. So looking to use the harpoon, which could be nullified, and the water ring to make that big attack coming back at him less potent. Mm -hmm. But I think if he wants to make the attack coming back at him less potent, it's better to just not do this attack. Yeah, I, I think his best play here, honestly, would have been to attack with attack with Hotaru, the challenger, and Kaizen. And here's why, politically for whatever ring you want, which is probably the water ring. Because then you force a defense, and even if he says no defenders, you use your challenger to pull in a defender, and then that, that Kaizen can beat in a duel. And then you make sure that Kaizen beats the duel, wins the duel, and sends everybody home. Um, but there is actually one critical logical flaw there for me. <laughs> I, I said political so that Hotaru could trigger, but if she's gone, she can't trigger. So disregard that play is invalid. I like the way you're thinking. Uh, I just... Don't think it's quite that easy at this point. Yeah, even even if he got that play to go, I don't think that he could really really close the door. But we see Micah really going in on this defense. Um, I don't think... Micah... Yeah, this is a really strong defense for a not-that-powerful ring effect, so he might have a plan. Yeah. Uh, he pretty much has to at this point. So we see let go. Ooh, this is a good start though. Discarding the Pathfinder's Blade with let go. Yeah. That's what Pathfinder's Blade number two that we've seen. Yeah, because the other one is on is on Shizue. So there's only one left in the deck. That's right. <laughs> Onimaru is memeing me. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. Thank you. Thank you very much. It it works in my head, but not in the actual mechanics. So we see it's 13 to 14. Mizumi is using Kaizen to challenge to a duel. And he did the strategy anyway. Yep. Um, so that that may have been some next level of defense by Micah saying, you're not going to win this. And even if you try, then you're if you try to duel, then I'll benefit from it as well. Um, the attacker is now winning, though. 
um, and Shameful Display is breaking. So that is a, I think that's a masterful use of Kaizen. And really, I want to take a step, a moment here to actually praise both of these players because Micah, with the next level of defense, saying no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win here. And if you uh, use Kaizen, then I'll get to get some guys back as well. And then Jeremy saying, you know what, I'm gonna use Kaizen because I want that break. So this is one of those rare opportunities where you use Kaizen, his ability is relevant, and now you can break past the last defender. Now, mind you, um, Micah had the control, right? So he could have chosen who was being dueled by Kaizen. So if he chose the challenger, then it might have had a different outcome. So we see Micah's a little nervous here, let go on the katana into another katana coming down on Kazen. He's a little worried that if he doesn't get the break on his first attack, that that political attack into his stronghold entrenched position. I don't, I don't see it, but um, yeah, he's really investing a lot into not having that shameful break. Yep, and so now we see a bonsai then jeremy passes and we see favorable ground used to bring the samurai in rash samurai that is so now it's eight to twelve uh the only thing that jeremy can have here is a bonsai of his own and that'll give him a tie but instead he passes so did we say mizumi's stronghold is likely to be rally yes it's either rally or um fertile fields and it's most likely rally so if it, Micah does not have another bonsai in hand, I am very, very against using the bonsai to hold the shameful display. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He doesn't really need it, and he has ways to guarantee himself um, an unopposed political for his last attack. What Micah really needs to not do here is he needs to not attack with political rival. If he attacks with both those political rivals, this game is basically over. Be well, not basically over, but it's very bad. Uh, we see him doing the all-in swing. Dude, you've got to know that this is Rally to the Cause. And so both of those rivals you just bought are just going to go home for nothing. What he needs to do is he needs to attack with two Doji challengers and Harpoon in Hotaru and the enemy challenger. But this, uh, this is a bold move, Cotton, and it's very likely to blow up. And there's the Rally. Boom. Yeah, this feels real bad for Micah because he has all the pieces on board to win here. So he coverts. We get the rally. Uh, I think he'll still pull it off because the rally will change this to military, but you've still got 14 military on the board. And then the only defender, Shizue, who has, what, one military? Two military by herself because of uh, With delayed. the favor, we're looking at three. And three with the favor, yeah. So I still think that Micah gets it, but uh, I don't know why he committed the political rivals. Um, yeah, he's still got it. I mean, he's... Shizue would have to get up to 9 to prevent the break. So I, I think that's GG. Um, the only way she could do that is like uh, Bonsai plus Kick plus Katana. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think it would have to be exactly that. Um, which seen... doesn't seem likely, especially since so much was invested into breaking shameful display. Yeah, we've seen all the katanas come out too. So bonsai plus kick plus honored almost gets you there. Um, if he then had a steward of law in hand, then he could he could do it. But nope, there's the GG. So we see Micah take it on uh, breaking stronghold. Um, both of these players are very good. So, like I said earlier, this was a very interesting game. Onimaru pointed out in chat we did miss call a lot of their lines, and that's that is true. Um, they both had some some trickery up their hands that threw off our predictions, and sometimes our predictions are just wrong. Um, not very many mistakes. I think there was there was one, at least one, kind of like indefensible mistake, but uh, that was it. The rest of them, other than they use box beam, they were all defensible. 
So Micah's last hand was policy to pay to assassination, admit defeat, way of the crane. So very strong. Yeah. So unfortunately for uh, for Jeremy, Micah just had complete honor control, and even if he did get the perfect uh, katana plus bonsai, he would have just gotten assassinated. Which really feels bad. Yeah, so Micah is saying that even if the Brash Samurai had gotten bowed in that last political, he had the favor and he had a rival to drop, so it was probably still getting broken. Um, especially since it could have been box box, they both get bowed. Um, but who knows? Coulda, woulda, shoulda. <laughs> Best thing, a crane one. The perfect game. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Cranes and Crane Associates admirers for sticking around and seeing this perfect game. Also, if you scroll up in chat, you'll notice there's a whole lot of blue. Everybody chose or was randomized into blue, except for Kai, who is the only green in this chat earlier on. <laughs> but um, even Insanity's name is blue. You can't get away from it. You can't get away from the blue Insanity. Crane winning is the worst thing, Insanity says, but uh, we were guaranteed for a crane to win. Uh, thank you all for watching. We'll be bringing in more games um, in the future. So there's still there won't be any more top 64 games actually. They're all they all need to be resolved by tonight. But we will have top 32 games coming. Uh, thank you for casting with me, Luke, and have a good night, everybody. Have a good night.